Welcome back to the Clinical Leadership Podcast. I am your host, Alex Earl, here at Midwest Rehabilitation Institute headquarters in Carroll Stream, Illinois. Uh, this is a rehab hitter uh, episode, so it's a short episode where we're going to deliver uh, valuable content that you can immediately pl- apply to your clinical practice. So uh, today's episode is sponsored by Midwest Rehabilitation Institute. If you're interested in rehabilitation, uh, sports medicine, sports performance classes, uh, including dry needling, uh, acupuncture, um, low back rehabilitation, shoulder rehabilitation, and we are excited to launch a soccer specific rehabilitation program uh, in the coming weeks and months. Uh, along with some online videos and some online content. So stay tuned. Uh, More on that in a minute, but let's dive right into today's content. As I mentioned, uh, and the title of this episode is about bad versus good orthopedic tests. And that stands for, those are acronyms, that stand for BAD, which BAD is Baseless Assumptions About Diagnosis. And the good stands for Good Odds, on diagnosis. And we have Elizabeth Brigo from Trust Me Education, uh, which is another wonderful online resource uh, for physical therapists and chiropractors to learn from. Uh, There there are a list uh, of special tests, and we joke regularly in clinical practice that special tests are not all equal, and they're not all that special. And so we are going to just quickly go through a list of the bad Uh, orthopedic tests that have very poor reliability, uh, or maybe said differently, very poor uh, specificity and sensitivity for their effectiveness in diagnosing um, in in the diagnosis. So here we go. We're going to start with the shoulder. So internal rotation lag, which is a test that is done to check for uh, uh, for subscapularis tendinopathy and the reason it's a poor study is that there's a, uh, the reason that it's a poor test is that there's only one study that measures uh, that measures the quality, so not enough data to suggest its effectiveness there. The next one is the CAN or the full or empty CAN test, which again is supposedly checking for supraspinatus tendinopathy, uh, and the uh, knock on that is that it, it, the reason for it being a bad test is that it has poor diagnostic utility. Um, I'm going to keep going down the shoulder here. Nears test, Hawkins, Kennedy, O'Brien's active compression test, pivot shift for, uh, for the knee. Uh, we've tra- uh, uh, moved on into the knee here. Anterior drawer uh, with medial or lateral tibial rotation for ACL and rotary instability. There's no known value as to how accurate or reliable of a test these all are. Varus and valgus stress test of the LCL and the MCL. Again, no known value. Apley's test for the meniscus, uh, or any uh, specific test for Plica syndrome. Uh, It has very poor diagnostic utility. Last one, and I thought this was one of the strangest tests that we learned in chiropractic school and orthopedic class, is the patellar grind test. Uh, And allegedly that is checking for patellofemoral pain syndrome. Um, The downside is that nearly every uh, adult uh, in our class, we're mostly young adults. Nearly every adult had patellar grind, but not everybody had patellofemoral pain. So th- it's very complicated that you could have a positive patellar grind and yet not have any symptoms or have any um, have any current pain episodes. Now we're going to flip over to the good. So that's half of the equation. The bad, again, just to reiterate. These are baseless assumptions about diagnosis. And we're going to flip over here to the good. Here's a list of good uh, orthopedic tests because they can help us either rule in or rule out. And so therefore are useful in the diagnostic uh, diagnostic, uh, standpoint. Uh, Back to the knee, we have Lachman's test, which we can rule in and we can help rule out for an ACL tear. We also have a lever sign, which is an, uh, an indicator or a test for ACL tear. Uh, We have a posterior drawer test, which helps to rule in or help rule out a PCL tear. Thessaly's, which we can use uh, for, uh, that's, I believe, uh, Thessaly's we use for uh, a tendinopathy, which it it can help uh, improve. Uh, It says it can can help improve the detection, or it's a useful positive, if that makes sense. Um, And then the last thing, uh, which is really helpful, which we use 
um, very regularly and frequently with our athletes in our clinic here is the Ottawa, uh, the Ottawa ankle guidelines. And we also uh, have used the Ottawa knee rule, uh, which helps rule out acute fracture. Uh, ruling out, uh, you know, uh, is just as important as ruling in. And the next one is also the Pittsburgh knee criteria. And then moving on down to, um, we also have the lateral job. We have a, a rotator cuff tear that can help, uh, can improve detection or help rule out. Uh, we also have uh, infraspinatus test, which checks for in, infraspinatus tendinopathy, which if positive can help us detect uh, the actual uh, diagnostic criteria for rotator cuff tendinopathy involving the infraspinatus. Next one we have is the shrug sign for both frozen shoulder and for rotator cuff tendinopathy. We have a bear hug test, which gives us uh, good clinical data for the subscapularis tendinopathy. Uh, we have a modified dynamic labral shear, which uh, helps to evaluate uh, labral tears. Uh, again, can help rule positive or negative, can help rule out. Um, uh, these ones uh, are, are um, and they have been, the, the last two involve a little bit of uh, subjectivity to them. The, they are the apprehension tests for anterior and uh, posterior in, instability. Both of those, uh, they can help uh, elicit a, or they can help improve our detection in something uh, very serious. So um, here we go. Here's just a quick, one to two sentence about each one. Again, we have to give credit to Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth, Elizabetta, Elizabetta Brigo uh, from Trust Me Education. Um, this was her original post that uh, Trust Me Physiotherapist shared on their Instagram. We'll make sure we include a link or a, a we'll reshare this uh, very useful clinical um, social media post. So here we go. Bad. Again, it's baseless assumptions about diagnostics or di diagnostic uh, diagnosis in regards to orthopedic tests, and they are unreliable. They provide little to no value, and we should stop using them and we should stop teaching them. Good orthopedic tests, good odds on the diagnostic criteria for uh, involving orthopedic tests can help rule out pathologies. And uh, again, as in all things, they should not be used in isolation. You should never just do one thing and uh, consider yourself uh, or consider the job done. Um, that's all I've got for today. We will make sure to share this uh, in our uh, weekly newsletter that goes out on Midwest Mondays because it's a really fantastic po uh, post. Um, and the last thing I want to just say is we have just revamped our Midwest membership. So we'll be delivering content like this uh, directly to our, uh, our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, uh, which uh, the Facebook page will be for members only. And so be sure to uh, check out the membership tab on the top of our website uh, where we are taking members through uh, educational events, business uh, counseling, business coaching, uh, and also hiring, firing, everything that goes into running a clinic uh, will be involved in the membership. Uh, and information like this will be shared regularly. Uh, there's a invaluable amount of uh, legal documents and uh, research papers uh, that we've either paid for or we've been given directly from the uh, authors that we uh, have been given permission to share with our members. So there are going to be a lot of uh, wonderful resources that we will be able to share with our members inside of the Facebook group. So go to MidwestRehabilitationInstitute.com and visit the uh, under the advancement tab at the top. Uh, click, on, uh, click on membership and read all about the membership, what it entails, uh, and you can apply uh, to become a Midwest member uh, directly from our website. As always, it's a pleasure to go through these rehab uh, hitter episodes with you. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't be afraid to reach out. Let us know what you, your thoughts are about our episodes, uh, about the content, about the experts that we have on, um, and we have more content coming in the weeks and months that are uh, coming up here. Uh, and the last thing I want to say is, uh, is a, a friendly request. Uh, if you are enjoying our episodes, go, uh, go to iTunes, Spotify, uh, specifically iTunes. Go to iTunes and give us a five-star review. That would really help us uh, expand our reach and also give us a good, uh, credible ranking uh, on the, probably the world's largest podcast platform. So yeah, give us a, a five-star review when you get a chance. Uh, screenshot it and share it on social media, and we will... Uh, we will, um, I think we're going to do a raffle. We will raffle off a prize uh, for those who participate in giving us a review. So thank you so much. And with that, I'm out.